Jersey. Yo 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 yo
That's maybe true. Aaron Judge, yeah, maybe Aaron Judge is just good for ticket sales. Maybe he's a draw. That's a lot of money. Now, yesterday, Kyrie Irving was, uh, of course, playing uh, in Brooklyn. He uh, taped over the Nike logo, and instead he wrote, I am free. Thank you, God, I am. He wrote that on his uh, sneakers yesterday. We have to stop doing stuff like that, man. I saw, uh, you know, when Kanye West did that with Balenciaga, like uh, the Montgomery bus boycott wouldn't have worked if, uh, you know, civil rights activists would have just, you know, taped over the names of the buses but still rolled them. Yeah. <laughs> like, you got to, sadly, you got to find something else uh, to, to, to put on your feet, Kyrie. Mm-hmm. Now, in some sad news, nine million people, you know, depressed, probably couldn't pay their student loans. Uh, sent in the email and, 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 and wrote down on the application about, you know, getting help, getting debt relief, student debt relief from the federal government. And an email sent out nine approved emails in return. But that wasn't the case. The email, oh, no, that's what. So now these nine million people that thought they would have approved uh, student debt relief uh, were happy during the holidays. Now it looks like that's not going to happen. Nah, they should have to honor that, man. You know, you know uh, I've heard stories. Now you go to the store sometime and, you know, somebody rings something up, but it's the wrong price for something. Correct. And and sometimes, you know, they they still have to honor the price that, you know, was accidentally rung up because yes. somebody in that store made a mistake. I feel like it should be the same way in this situation. Yeah, I think that's foul. I think that, you, you, you know, you, you do the right, you know, things that you're supposed to do. Fill out the application. You get an email back that says approved. You're happy. That, like, that could mess up your, so, your your mental right there. You know, you're happy. You're ecstatic. You feel like, look, I, yeah. I can spend a little money for Christmas and buy my, my kids some yeah. gifts or my family some gifts. And then all of a sudden, oops, sorry, wrong. That ain't right. Now, now who sent the email back? Did this come from yeah. the, the White House? Like, what, what who, 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 who comes sends the email back? Yeah, who the Department the of Education. Well... Remember that in uh, 2024. Yeah. <laughs> Straight up. When election, when election time comes around in 2024, remember how they punked you. All right. Remember how they punked you. Remember that, how you thought your student loans was about to get uh, w- wiped away and uh, for them to only tell you, psych. Yeah. That remember is crazy. Psych? I do psych. remember psych. And lastly, uh, Jalen Smith becomes the youngest black mayor in U.S. history. He's age 18 and he's a brother. It feels okay. good to say I've been elected as mayor of, of this great city. People say I'm too young, but you have to start somewhere in life. You know, I didn't want to wait till I was 30 or 40 to run for mayor. I want to do it now. You know, I want to come back home. You know, I want to feel safe and secure here. Getting them jobs, get them, you know, getting the activities, just something. Because I'm like them. I want something to do as well. Well, the council have to realize I'm the mayor. And secondly, it doesn't have nothing to do with age. If you're for moving the city in the right direction, you do what you say you wanted to do. Now, that's early Arkansas. That's the name of the town. Uh, it has a population of 2,000 residents, and uh, Jalen Smith uh, won with 218 votes. Lord have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> My God. Drop on the clues bonds for Jalen Smith. Rumble, young King Rumble. Could you imagine uh, what he's going to do at age 18 as mayor? He sounds like a very smart, well-rounded kid, he if you does. ask me. He absolutely, positively does. So he, he sounds like he might do some good things. I think he will. I think yeah. he will. And I love to see that it's a young brother because, you know, they they understand what's bothering them and what needs to be fixed. And a lot of times we have a lot of those uh, older mayors and, and people that represent us, and I think they're out of touch. So we'll see how this works. Congratulations to that young brother. Now, I'm not mad at it. 2,164 residents. 200 people came to vote. <laughs> 200 people. Well, 200 people voted for him. So it, Earl, I'm, Earl, I'm sure like Earl, 300 people probably voted. Earl probably only put up five signs throughout the whole city. <laughs> probably spent $200, but hey, he got That's it. That's it. What's his campaign budget? I think I I his campaign budget probably was about 1100 1100 About okay. 1100 1100 right. Salute to you. Salute to you, though, Earl. All right. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Wake up, wake up. Wake your ass up. This is your time to get it off your chest. Whether you're mad or blessed, we want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Y'all, hey y'all. I got an update for y'all, y'all. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Trav. Now, up, if, Trav? if you haven't heard, yesterday Trav called in and was mad at Rolling Ray and was given receipts about the fact that he gave Rolling Ray some money for some drops and Roland Ray uh, rolled out on him and didn't do any drops. But now I hear there's an update, Trav. Yes, there is an update. Roland Ray sent me my money back yesterday. Really? Yes, he did. But 
I'm still beefing with him because it's how he sent my money back. How he sent the money back. This man gonna tell me he told some dang that you needed so bad hair. <laughs> That's right. Drop one of the clues bombs for Roland Ray. Okay, I'm glad oh I'm God, glad Roland Ray shared you some grace. I'm glad <laughs> Roland Ray gave you some grace and decided to spare you, you little peasant, <laughs> since you need it so bad. You know, let me take a little seventy five dollars for the new year. So I low key like I said, I said, bro, that's my money. Like you need to give me my money. He's gonna say, um, you need to stop talking like that. Um, he says, you need to stop talking like that, or I'm not gonna help you out. Like, sir, you're not helping me. Hey, that's a great tactic, you know, that's because funny. he can he can shame you into saying, I don't I don't need this money. Keep it, and <laughs> then he he won. Trap. Well, I just wanna say. I am happy because, um, listen, I say all the time, I don't be pretending I got money out here. $75 helps me a lot, okay? So I don't I, I don't know why much. Roland Ray is giving you peasant's grace. <laughs> trap. Hey, you star. Do not be by. Trap, trap. Obviously, <laughs> Roland Ray listens in the morning. That's probably why you got your money back. Would you like to say something well, to Roland well, Ray? Uh, uh, Roland Ray, you, be- you better have gave my money back. It took two years. Am I playing with you? <laughs> All right. Well, if you really need it, there's your money back. Thank you. Envy, you owe me something, too. But I am glad that Roland Ray is the type of royalty that can show uh, mercy to the peasants in his kingdom. Uh, Hello, who's this? This is Alexis from Brooklyn. Hey, Alexis from Brooklyn. Good morning. Get it off your chest. Good morning. So yesterday you guys had the leader from the anti-Semitic group up there. and Jonathan Greenblatt. Yes, yes. Um, I understood what he was saying, but a lot of what he was saying um, also was contradicting. Um, as far as the people in Hollywood and the power that they have, he was skating around the fact that they do have power. And no, we don't want people to attack them because of the power, but they are using their power. And we know that, just like he said, Kanye said something and he lost everything. So I felt like, Con- not Kanye, uh, Charlemagne, you should have been a little bit more hard on him about that because he was skating around the answers. He really was. He wasn't taking accountability. I, I, I don't think he skated around the answer at all. The only thing he was saying was, you know, it's the difference between, you know, say, saying somebody's in a position of power, but then saying somebody's using that power to, you know, put out a bunch of negative images in Hollywood and, you know, a negative, a bunch of negative images in the media. That's the difference. Get it off your chest. Eight hundred. Hung up on her. Huh? She hung. Yes. She hung up herself. I now, see, now you. Now you. Now you using your power wrong. No, I hung up on Trav. <laughs> I didn't hang up on that young lady. So what happened to her? I don't know. Maybe her phone dropped. Oh, my God. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. This is your time to get it off your chest, whether you're mad or blessed. So you better have the same energy. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Yo, this is Gerv calling from Seattle. What's good, y'all? What up, Gerv? Get it off your chest. Hey, I just want to get off my chest, man. I just want to give you, uh, give both you and Charlemagne, you guys, flowers, actually, because honestly, you know, y'all push, you know, y'all help me, help me push through a whole summer with, like, you know, just, like, listening to y'all every day, and it's also just, you know, during school and all that stuff, and I just want to give y'all, both y'all, y'all flowers, you know, as a brown man and all that stuff, like, you know. Y'all really like you know gave you know gave a lot of motivation for me and all that stuff. It's like you know and a lot of laughter too. Also, so I just want to give y'all y'all flowers and all and say thank you. All right, all right. thank, thank you, you Gerv. Appreciate that. Appreciate you, brother. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Hey, y'all have a good morning now. You too, man. Hello, who's this? What's going on? This is Sean. Sean, what up? Get it off your chest. Hey man, I just want to get it off my chest this morning. But first of all, let me say good morning, Charlemagne. Good morning. Uh, and, you know what I'm saying? Good morning, fellas. How y'all doing today? We're doing good, Peace, brother. King. How, How you are feeling? You? I'm doing good, man. I'm celebrating my birthday, you know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm lit right now, man. I'm on my way to work, actually. You know, I you know, I just wanted to let y'all know, man, I really appreciate y'all in the morning time, man. Oh, I appreciate that, yeah, my really brother. You through the day, man, like in the morning time, man, that, you know what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all give me that, 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 that perk, you know what I'm saying, to, to get me through the day, man. I appreciate that. All right, thank, thank you, you King. Yes, sir. And uh, Sean, I wanted to ask you about your book too, man. Uh, can I get? Is it any way possible I can get a copy of it? I don't have any at the current moment. I have to get a, a new shipment of um, Black Privilege and Shook One in. But as soon as I get them, uh, I, can, I can get your information. And we can send it out at a later date. But I can send you uh, a Black Effect 
Snapback right now. You know my podcast network, Black Effect. I can send you that right now. Oh, yeah, that's dope. Yes, sir. I appreciate that. Hold on, bro. Right. Okay. Yeah, Taylor Red, one of y'all, right. put him on hold, get his email, and send that out today, please. He's line three. Hello, who's this? Good morning. This is Tasha. Good morning, Tasha. Get it off your chest. Hi, right, yeah. So I was listening to you guys this morning, and you guys had an interview with the young man, uh-huh. and he was talking about the organization that he did have, that he he's the CEO of. Oh, I Jonathan don't Greenblatt, the ADL. Yeah, so I'm trying to understand why is it when you guys ask him about the anti-Semitic definition, he really couldn't give a definition. He gave more so of examples. But then when he uh, said about what he, you know, what he represents, the Jew, the Jews, the blacks, the LGB and whatever, whatever. I'm trying to understand. So is the Jew a nation or what are they considering themselves as? Because it sounds like it's more it's so of it's so it sounds more so of he's trying to throw in the other guys like the blacks and the LGB, but it's more so of an organization for those guys. And for who, I don't people? understand. Yeah, for Jews. That, that's exactly what it understand. is. <laughs> what do you and, mean? He said right, that. For, like when I'm. Uh, he says that, but he say he's helping out the black and the LGBT with that. And I'm like, well, no, you don't don't associate that with that when you already, you know, contradicting what you're saying when you're trying to help this. But then you're saying anti-Semitic is basically what? Well, that's that, that's what that's what one, one of my questions to him was, you know, the uh, ADL says it's an anti-hate group. You know, but what are they doing? You know, it, it, it seems like they're more passionate about anti-Semitism than anti-black racism. But his answer is 100 percent reality. The reality is the ADL was created to protect Jewish people. It's a Jewish organization. So my question is, where's our organization It's black people? That's what we need to be focusing on. Where's our organization to protect we us? We need to. But we still have, you know, how back in the day you have those ones who always go run and tell master what we're going to do and then it comes crumbling down so until we figure out how we're going to do this you know like a secret organization like how they have then we can make but, it work but, but, but their organ but their organ their organization is not a secret you only know we just, only know what they allow us to what they allow us to know you know what i'm saying but it's very secret Hey, it's not a they secret at all. We just had the CEO of the Anti-Defamation League on yesterday, and he let us know exactly what the Anti-Defamation League is about. It is an organization to protect Jewish people against anti-Semitism. So my thing is, where is the black organization that is going to protect us against anti-black racism? I guess that's what the NAACP and the Urban League, I guess that's what those organizations are supposed to be. I don't know if you know they've done the best of jobs, but that's what they're supposed to be. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, you can hit us up at any time. Now, when we come back, we got your rumor report. We got to talk TJ Holmes and him being investigated. We'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Black. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get to the rumors. Let's talk takeoff. Rumor has it. Rumor, rumor has it. Call out a name or you gossiping or you chatty I patty. I'm gossiping. This is The Rumor Report. I mean, I guess we on The Breakfast Club. This is where the tea spills, right? Yes. Right. On The Breakfast Club. Now, some sad news. I hate to hear things like this. Now, what? you know, the brother Takeoff, he passed away without a will. And now they're mm. saying that his parents are fighting over his estate. Now, they're saying that uh, both his mom and his dad, uh, when you pass away with no will in Georgia, your closest relatives have exclusive rights over his money and assets. Uh, His parents, I guess, are estranged, don't really get along, they're saying. And they're saying they're having more issues because, you know, uh, his mother wants to to have to be able to distribute the assets. And so does his father. But what they're saying now is is they're going back and forth in court because they don't have a will. So that's why they always encourage people. Uh, even if you're young, if you're at a young age to get a will, because if something ever happens, you want that money distributed the way that you want it distributed. So they're going back to a lot of uh, takeoff songs where he uh, raps about uh, how his mom encouraged him and how he uh, grew up in a single mother household. So hopefully they can uh, squash that and get that together. Of course, takeoff had no no kids, but, you know, his mother and his father are fighting over the state. You know, I think people think a will is a matter of age a lot of times, but a will is a matter of income and assets. If you have a lot of something, it don't matter how young you are. You have to get your will in a state in order because the sad reality is we never know what the future holds. All right. I'll be here tomorrow. No, that's absolutely positively true. Now, also, um, 
TJ Holmes, it seems like uh, their relationship is being under review right now at GMA3. Uh, they believe uh, the, the co-anchors uh, haven't violated any company policies, but they are definitely checking because now there's uh, alleged rumors that he might have been uh, cheating with other people that work there as well. So they're taking a deep dive into this and seeing exactly what's going on before he's allowed back on air. Well, that always happens in these situations, right? Uh, black man, white woman, black man gets demonized. You don't really hear much about the woman. You right. know the woman was married as well, yes. and it wasn't no it wasn't no uneven power dynamic. They both were host of Good Morning America. You hear way more about T.J. Holmes in the news, and you hear these stories now. All of a sudden, oh, T.J. Holmes may have been sleeping with other women. Are I saw I read something yesterday with T.J. Holmes was terrible to work with, and he was always mean to people. I'm like, oh really? Now all of a sudden. I didn't hear that one, and I've been up there a couple of times. That was in the times. page. Six. I read. I read. It's in the, the same page six article that uh, t uh, that talks about him potentially being with other women. It's in that wow. article, which yeah. is crazy. That's what they do. Mm -hmm. Always have it. Never fail. They will always demonize the, the 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 black man in that situation. Always, but you don't hear much about the woman at all. Same thing with the Celtics situation. You hear about the coach all the time, but you don't hear about the married woman he slept with. That's facts. That's facts. Now, also, uh, Issa Rae's uh, Sweet Life, Los Angeles. Did you ever watch that? No. Yes, well, Issa Rae's, it was on HBO Max. It's been canceled after two seasons. So that show won't be coming back if you're a big fan of that show. And that's, Issa Rae will be all right. And that show was named after uh, Frank Ocean song, Sweet Life, that came out in 2012. I heard Issa might be taking it somewhere else, though. Probably. That's what I read. Mm-hmm. Now, one thing that I thought that was dope, if you follow Missy Elliott, of course, Missy Elliott, Missy Elliott is a legend. She's an icon when it comes to this music thing, production and writing. Uh, she was talking about some of her albums, right? And she was talking about how her albums made her feel. She talked about the, the first album was stress-free. Uh, she only did the first album because the label said, if you do this album, uh, I, I'll give you, uh, I, I believe, her own label deal. So that was the only reason she did the, the uh, first album. And it did amazing. Um, the second album, she said that was uh, The Real World. She said this was her artist album to complete because of the success of the first album. So she had to talk about that, but she said that was later a, a success and she loved that album. She said her third album, uh, which was so addictive, she just talked about all her different albums and what they meant to her. But the dope thing about it is a lot of artists started quoting and even Tyler, the creator. He said, to my younger fans, I want you to go study all of Missy's albums. Past the Dutch Beat still blows my mind. Go watch the Hot Boys video. See how she approached lick shots and gossip folks with her voice. Capital M. So people are, are giving Missy her flowers. What's capital M? I just said, I don't know what capital M. I'm just reading what oh. he said. I guess capital M is in capital Missy. M, I don't know. But I just love the fact that people are giving Missy her flowers right now. Oh, she absolutely deserves it. Drop on the clues bombs with Missy Misdemeanor. And, you know, that's also interesting because, remember, we, you reported that story about Cardi yesterday and, you know, how she's feeling about her sophomore album. Cardi needs to talk to Missy. Right. Because that, that's the headspace Cardi seems to be in now. Invasion of Privacy had so much success. But, you know, Cardi just was having fun doing that. But now the second album feels more like work because she's trying to, you know, top the success of the first one. You right. Know? Missy yeah. would be a good person for Cardi to tap into and, and build with. Yeah, absolutely. And, and like you said, the first album with, with, with Cardi was stress-free. You know, there was no expectations. It was like, let's do this. And if it works, it works. And then it worked. But it didn't just work. It <laughs> worked like 7 million work, you know. And, you know, and trying to beat that and trying to top that is always a difficult feat. But Cardi's putting out some, some, some records, so. And the reality is you might not have as much success as the first one. But so what? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you, you kinda, you're playing with house money. You won already. Just, yeah. just go in there, have fun. Put the second album out, let it do what it does, then move on to the next one. It might be your third, fourth album that, you know, has that same type of success. Who knows? Or the second one could be mass massive. Who knows? That's true. I can't, you can't be overthinking these kind of things, man. Whatever God got planned, going to happen. All right. Well, that is your rumor report. Now, when we come back, could you imagine getting in trouble for having beds at the office? We'll talk. Depends we'll what you're doing on said bed. Yo, shut and, up, man. And with who? I'm serious. <laughs> shut up, man. Like, like you, you, I need more context here, sir. You can't just throw that out there. Well, we'll talk about that next. Don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. When it's time to get with someone special, the best way to do it is with Magnum Large Size Condoms. That gold foil wrapper is a badge of honor, and it means you're protected. And you take care of things with comfort. 
Accept no substitutes. Bring the pleasure with the gold standard. Magnum, large size condoms. Drink, drink. Sit your drink, ass drink. Down. Sit your drink, ass down. Drink. Sit your ass down. Drink, drink. Sit your ass down. Morning, That's the everybody. Most important thing Kendrick says in that whole song. Sit your ass down. We are the Breakfast Club. I'm DJ Envy. I go by the name of Charlemagne the God. What's happening? All right, let's get to the front page news. Now, Aaron Judge, New York Yankees, signs a massive deal. Nine years, $360 million. <sighs> Drop on the clues box for that, man. Congratulations. Um, a lot of people say they don't like that deal because Aaron Judge is 31 years old. Yeah, he'll, he'll be, be 40, 40 at the end of that deal. And he's not necessarily consistent when it comes to hitting those home runs. Although last year he had an amazing year. Years prior to that, it wasn't always that great. He's been in a slump for a while, so they feel like that is a lot of money. But like Aaron you Judge said earlier, slump. Yeah, he was I don't slump. watch baseball, so mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, but like you said, it's his also his name. His name brings a lot of fans to that stadium, and I don't think necessarily the Yankees have a huge star other than Aaron Judge, right? I think he is the Yankee star. So, uh, I mean, I'm sure his his name will keep asses in those seats, though. Yeah, he's a big draw, and he had other offers, and I'm sure they didn't want him to leave because that would look stupid for them. Yep. I just, you know, I'm, I'm not a fan of baseball. I used to watch baseball in the 1900s, you know what I mean, because the Braves used to always be on TV growing up in uh, Monk's Corner, South Carolina. Mm-hmm. And I really, really do love baseball better when everybody was on steroids. Put some steroids in your cereal, man. Oh, my goodness. Now, uh, you know I mean? Deion Get the sport back where it needs to be. Deion Sanders School, JSU, of course, Jackson State University, his not mur- his school no more. Well, his ex school. It was his mural was defaced, but That's they believe so not by a student, by somebody on the outside. Uh, a school rep says actually the students have been wiping Dion's mural and cleaning off the mess that the the person has done, and they're doing a full investigation to find out why this individual did it and to lock that individual up. Because that individual is probably a social media minded idiot, and he's watching these idiots from social media who are slandering Deion Sanders for no reason and calling him a sellout for no reason. So he decided, you know what, I'm gonna go do something. And probably he probably recorded it. <laughs> I'm probably, sure. And, he, and he's probably gonna post it uh, sooner than later, even with the police looking for his dumb ass. And salute to those students, man. Drop a little clues bombs for those students. Going to go clean that mural because you know the reality is, you know, you can be sad. Uh, you know that 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 Dion left, but you should you know celebrate that it happened because Dion did a lot for Jackson State University over those three years. Mm-hmm. Now, also Elon Musk and Twitter is under investigation by city uh, city officials in San Francisco. Now, this is because of a complaint. Now, this complaint is because some of the office rooms that he has at Twitter he's turned into sleeping quarters. Now, he's put you know mattresses, curtains, uh, TVs. Uh, four to eight bedrooms, uh, four to eight beds on the floor. Now, this is because he said that, you know, at Twitter, some of his of his employees have long hours and it's high intensity. And he'd rather have them sleeping there than falling asleep on the road than trying to drive home and not necessarily making it home. So I believe he made these quarters so people could take naps. And I don't have a problem with it. I think that's actually great. I think that's incredible. I think that's part of having a mindfulness workplace. You know what I mean? Because what if you're tired as hell and on your lunch break you you want to get a quick 20-minute yes. nap? So instead of going to sit in the car or sit at your desk, you can go into a nice little comfortable environment in a bed, set your little alarm clock, you know what I'm saying? Wake up 20, 30 minutes, get up, eat your sandwich, get back to work. I have nothing, yes. there's nothing wrong with that. Even at the end of a long day, when you're just sitting there like, oh, man, I'm ready to go, but I don't feel like driving. And then you just t- go take a quick nap before you get on the road. I don't have a problem with it. Bro, couches and beds at the studio where we used to have a, a couch in the back that pulled out to a bed, that saved my life. Like, there's no way. We, no, we had a pull out. We did? Yeah, we, we got a pull out there now. There's a pull out back there now. Oh, I didn't know that. Ooh. I know we had a, a, a air mattress. Yeah, air, oh, we had an air mattress at first. And then when uh, our new uh, boss came in, she seen me sleeping on the air mattress and, and got me a, a couch to pull out to a bed. But if it wasn't for that, those saved my life because there's no way when I used to DJ every night in the city, I'm leaving the club at 4 a.m., 3.30 a.m. There's no way I could drive home, go home, take a shower, you know, maybe go to sleep for an hour or two and then drive back. I would I would crash on the highway. Think about, think about how reckless we were. Well, not reckless, but, you know, back in the day when we were – younger and we used to be out all night there would be times i'd be sleeping on the air mattress then envy walking the door and i could see the look of disgust on his face because he wanted that air mattress right absolutely and vice versa i walk in sometimes like damn envy already here 
you know, now I got to go sleep on a chair or something. Yes. But, but when we used to be out all night and have and then come into work in the morning, oh, my God. Yes. Them, 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 that air mattress used to be a lifesaver. Yeah, I think it's, I thought it was smart that he did that. And lastly, uh, Indiana is suing TikTok over child safety and data security concerns. And also, um, Texas governor, Greg Abbott, is doing the same. He's banning TikTok on state devices. So they're actually trying to ban uh, TikTok in totality. Uh, they're saying that it's not owned by any U.S. companies, and they don't know where that information is possibly going. Yeah, didn't the FCC say that uh, er, that like TikTok should be banned? Yes. You know, from America because of what you just said, the, the, the TikTok's uh, inability to secure the data of U.S.-based users. Mm-hmm. Didn't they say that? Absolutely. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I wouldn't mind if they got rid of all of it at this point, to be honest. It's like social media is ruining our cognitive abilities. Folks don't even know how to move without thinking about how it's going to look on social, social media. There are Absolutely. people waking up this morning right now and don't even know how to feel about something until they get on social media to see how everybody else feels about it, and then they're going to go with the popular opinion. That's why I tell you all all the time to read Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport and watch uh, The Social Dilemma on Netflix, a documentary about what social media is doing to us in our brains. Mm-hmm. And also, if you're, mm-hmm. oh, go ahead. What I was gonna say, also, if you're a parent out there, just be careful with your kids on it as well, because there's so many things on there that can cause depression, that can cause anxiety. Absolutely. So make sure you really monitor your kids when it comes to social media. Uh, I was telling you earlier, my kids don't have social media. The younger kids, they don't have social media. They don't have Instagram. They don't have TikTok. They don't have any of that stuff. I prefer that they stay off of it. Now, they are on YouTube because there's so many different, like the YouTube, I will say, teaches the kids how to play better in Roblox. Uh, we'll teach the kids this, that, and the other. I hate that as well, but uh, I take them off of all social media apps. You, you, YouTube is the worst, too, and I'll tell you why. And, and my wife literally just shut this down the other day because my, my two youngest daughters my seven year old and my four year old they like to watch these two young black girls on YouTube named um, oh what's their names I don't remember their name Samira and something. I don't remember the two young girls mm-hmm. name, but they're very very young but what happens is sometimes you be watching YouTube and after you watch one video it just starts going into other videos Yes. and you be looking at these videos and these videos look innocent but then it'll be something like a pregnant Barbie and how Barbie got pregnant. So you're looking at it and you're thinking it's dolls and stuff, but then these adults are on there like actually really? you know, talking about things they shouldn't be talking about to the young kids. Absolutely. Mm. And my wife shut all that down yesterday. She was like, no more YouTube. It was, a, it was some pregnant Barbie video that popped up. Wow. <laughs> and that, that's, that's all she wrote. All right. Well, that is your front page. Hold, hold on. One more book recommendation, too. What's that? Uh, the Shallows by Nicholas Carr. The Shallows, what the Internet is doing to our brains. This book came out in 2011. And when you read what Nicholas Carr wrote mm-hmm. uh, about what the Internet was doing to our brain in 2011, now in 2022, it's worse than what he wrote about. But it's, it's a good read. You should read it. All right. Now, when we come back, let's talk about people owing you money. And when they give you you money, how they try to treat you. So this story comes from Trav. You know Trav, uh, he's a longtime listener, friend to the room. He's called, he called up here so many different times. But Rolling Ray owed him some money, but Rolling Ray finally paid him back. But it was a twist. Rolling Ray gave me my money back yesterday. Really? Yes, he did. But I'm still beefing with him because it's how he sent my money back. This man going to tell me, he told us something. Dang, that you need it so bad here. <laughs> That's right. I'm glad Roland Ray gave you some grace and decided to spare you, you little peasant, since you need it so bad. I said, bro, that's my money. Like, you need to give me my money. He's going to say, you need to stop talking like that or I'm not going to help you out. Like, sir, you're not helping me. Mm. Such a such a merciful king, Rolling Ray. Is. <laughs> such a such a merciful king, Rolling Ray is to 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 give that peasant back his money with such grace. Okay. All right. So that is the question. 800-585-1051. Has this ever happened to you? Somebody owe you money. They give you your money back and tell like, I'm just giving you your money back so you stop calling me. It's yeah, my so, money. So, yeah. So has somebody ever tried to shame you for owing you money when they, they, they give you your money back and be like, take your little hundred dollars. It wasn't little when I gave it to you. All right. Now all of a sudden it's my little hundred dollars. Take your little hundred dollars. 800-585-1051. Let's talk about it. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's topic time. Pick up the phone, baby. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with the Breakfast Club. Talk about it. 
Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Now, if you're just joining us, we're talking about Trav. You know Trav that always calls up here. Well, he mm-hmm. got into an incident with Roland Ray. Now, I was trying to figure out how I can disca- describe Roland Ray to people that don't know. So, I guess Roland Ray, he was a troll that he's in a wheelchair. He was don't on Catfish. Don't you talk about that king like that. That king was not no damn troll. He was on Catfish. Okay. He was catfishing people. He wasn't on Catfish. He was actually on a show that uh, I, 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 I there was a spinoff to Catfish called I think it was called Trolls, and I was the host. Oh. Uh, I was I, I was I was one of the hosts, and um, he was on an episode of, of of that of that show. Oh, yeah, he was on an episode of that show because he was a uh, I think he was a big Nicki Minaj fan at the time. And he was on there with somebody who was a big little Kim fan, and they had been going back and forth on social media. That's that show. I forgot when that show aired, but it was me and um uh, my man Raymond Braun. We was the we was the host of that show. We only did like four episodes though, because oh. uh, Roland Ray ended up trying to run over the guy with his wheelchair, and then the other guy what? threw some wa- some water at Roland Ray, and then you know they decided that this show might be a. A little bit too confrontational for people. <laughs> Goodness gracious. <laughs> That's right. All right. Well, it's called Trolls. It's on MTV. Well, this is what happened uh, with Trav and Roland Ray. Roland Ray gave me my money back yesterday. Really? Yes, he did. But I'm still beefing with him because it's how he sent my money back. This man going to tell me, he told us some dang, since you need it so bad here. <laughs> That's right. I'm glad Roland Ray gave you some grace and decided to spare you, you little peasant, since you need it so bad. I said, bro, that's my money. Like, you need to give me my money. He's going to say, you need to stop talking like that or I'm not going to help you out. Like, sir, you're not helping me. So we're asking 800-585-1051. Has this happened to you? Has people owed you money and then when they gave you back your money, they want to shame you? Charlamagne? Um, you know what? No. And the reason no, because I don't put myself in that situation, meaning that if people, you know, ask me to borrow money, I don't necessarily ask for it in return because the reality is sometimes people borrow money from you and they borrow amounts that they've never had in their life, especially when they think you got it like that. And so I I already fixed my mind to know that this person isn't going to pay me back. And by the way, you know, when I do get paid back, I'm pleasantly surprised. Like, that happened to me, like, honestly, once. And when I mean once, that happened to me once, and it happened in the last, you know, few years. Somebody asked me to borrow some money, and I gave it to them, and then just pleasant surprise, it, you know, was in my cash app. You know, they did they did indeed pay me back, but I don't find myself in those situations because I don't put myself in those situations to expect to be paid back. Yeah, I, I, I don't lend money because of that, uh, actually. But there, somebody actually did uh, owe me some money. And the, the thing is that I hate is, is when they pay you back or, or when they owe it to you, they be like, you got it, though. You got it. How you know what I got? Don't worry about yeah. what I got. Yeah, and, and, and it goes back to my childhood trauma when I let somebody hold a kung fu a uh, Nintendo game, that video game Kung Fu, and I let them hold the Nintendo game, and they 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 never bought it back. So that was the first time I was ever really disappointed to not receive something back in return that I that I lent somebody. And um, because of that, I don't ever want to put myself in this situation to to feel like Trav. I don't want nobody to shame me because they owe me something. Well, let's go to the phone lines. Hello, who's this? Monique, how are you? Hey, Monique. Good morning. How you feeling? I'm doing great, DJ Envy. It's so good to be on a breakfast club. I ne- met you in Houston oh, at did- your car show. Oh, did you enjoy it? I loved it. I loved it. And you and your wife are just awesome, awesome, awesome. Oh, thank you. We're coming back this year, too, so I can't wait to see you again. No, you're not. Come okay. back next year. Well, next year. Next year. You're right. Next year. And Charlemagne, I got both of your books. I need you oh. to sign my books for me. I got you. That's easy. I don't know how I'm going to get to do it, but yeah, I would love to. Well, we'll put we'll put you on hold and you can mail them up here and we can mail them back. But we're asking, has somebody uh, owed you money when they pay you back? They try to shame you? Of course. All the time. You know what I'm saying? Because it's your little funky money then. <laughs> your little funky <laughs> money. <laughs> your little $20. Yeah, exactly. You know. Like, but when you asked me for it, you was in desperate need. So why wouldn't you think I need my money back in a timely manner at that? Because you had it to give. That's right. You know what I'm saying? And like Envy oh. said earlier, that's what people say. They be like, you got it. You got it. You got it. You don't know my situation. Hello, who's this? Hi, this is Josie calling from Louisiana about the money situation. Oh, yes, Josie. Ma'am. It sounds like you I, had a situation, Josie. Yeah, has somebody ever shamed yeah. you for owing you money? Yes, this not the problem with them borrowing it, but when folks in Louisiana have to return your money, it's funky. It has a smell. <laughs> Stop. 
<laughs> take your little funky ass, take your little funky ass $50. Yes, indeed. It don't smell when they borrow it, but honey, it sure does smell when they gotta return it. So I just figured I'd let y'all know about that one. All <laughs> right, thank Damn. you. Is that a thing, your little funky money? Hell yeah, take your little funky ass $50 then. It's little and funky. Either the money stink or the money small. One <laughs> of the two. Take your little, take your little ass. $50. Take your little funky ass $50. 800 585 1051. Have you ever lent somebody money, but then when they gave it back to you, it was like, well, here's the money if you need it. Here's your little funky ass though. money. What well, Roland Ray said to travel was hilarious. Yeah, we're gonna well, play we're gonna play that back take, when we come back. Take your money back if you need it that bad. <laughs> if you need it that bad. <laughs> it's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. I know when I'm in. Call me. Add your opinion to the Breakfast Club top. Come on. 800-585-1051. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, if you're just joining us, we're talking about Trav, who calls up here all the time. You know Trav, friend to the room. Well, he sent Roland Ray allegedly some money for some drops. Uh, Roland Ray never sent the money back, never did the drop, so he came up here and he expressed himself and, and said he was mad. Well, Roland Ray finally gave the money back, and this is what he said when he gave the money back. Roland Ray gave me my money back yesterday. Really? Yes, he did, but I'm still beefing with him because it's how he sent my money back. This man going to tell me, tell us something. Dang, that you needed so bad hair. <laughs> That's right. I'm glad Roland Ray gave you some grace and decided to spare you, you little peasant, since you needed so bad. I said, bro, that's my money. Like, you need to give me my money. He's going to say, you need to stop talking like that, or I'm not going to help you out. Like, sir, you're not helping me. I'm not going to lie. Dropping a clues bar for Roland Ray. Wow. That was, because that was incredible, man. You know, I'm going to tell you why that was incredible. Because that's reverse psychology, right? Okay? You owe somebody money. So the person, you know, that, that owes you says, well, take your money. Here's your money back since you need it so bad. That right there could shame that person into letting their ego and their pride kick in to where they'd be like, matter of fact, I, I don't need the money. I don't need the money. Keep it. It's just the principle. It's the principle. But I don't need it. Keep it then. Now you won. You right. Now you don't got to pay the person back. You right. Well, let's go to the phone lines if this has happened to you. Hello, who's this? Jay. What's your name? Jane. J A N E. Uh, oh, hey, like Jane. Mary Jane. Hey, Jane. Good morning. Hey. What's up, Mary Jane? <laughs> good morning. So, we're, we're asking. What's that, up? This... I'm calling from Detroit. I just want to say that I want to show my city. What up, though? What up, though? You know, a lady called yesterday and said the brothers on the east side of Detroit really eat the bookies. No, that's not what she said. She said the brothers on the east side uh, of Detroit are triple threats. I don't know about all of that, but I do like uh, east side. I like east side. I really do. I'm from the she west said, side, though. She said, because they got good D, they eat poom poom, and they eat bunky. Call them a triple threat, she said. <laughs> I don't know about all that. Okay. But, uh, Just asking. Yeah. So what, So now we're asking, you know, has somebody you borrow, you lent somebody money, and then when they returned it, had a, a, a fresh way of saying it or, or trying to shame you, giving you back your money? Okay, so I'm in a, a similar situation right now with my little brother, and this could be the last time that I'm, I even involve money with family. So I had some AirPods that I barely even used. I think I used them like twice, and he needed some. So I was like, okay, if you want them, you can purchase them from me for half. So I was like, you can pay $100. So he had them, he took them from me, and he had them for like two days without paying. And then he had texted me like the third day, and he was like, I'll give you 50, and then I'll give you 50, you know, later. So I'm like, okay, cool, whatever. It's my little brother. I don't care. So he I, he gave me 50, and then, like, I waited another day, never heard from him or nothing. Like, I didn't say anything. I finally texted him. I was like, where's my money? Like, I want my $50. Like, <laughs> you owe me money for these AirPods. I, I'm not playing. Like, I'm so serious. And he was like, stop calling me about $50. You so pressed. Like, and I was so confused. I'm like, we had a whole deal. How you not going to pay my money? He still hasn't paid me for my money. And he still got my AirPods. And I'm I'm real mad. Like, and we beefing over $50. See, people don't understand. It's not about the money a Thank lot of times. Mama. It's about the principle. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like you disrespected me. I thought you had more respect for me than this. 
and now you're making me seem like you don't have no kind of respect for me and that you think you can play with me any old kind of way. It's about the principle a lot of times, man. Didn't didn't Big Worm teach y'all that on Friday? Mm-hmm. Hello, who's this? What's up, man? It's Jay from, from Hopkins, South Carolina. What's up? What's up, Charlemagne? DJ what Andrew, up, Jay? Hello. What up, Jay? I see you all day. What's happening? Has this happened to you, Jay? <laughs> Better believe it. Huh? Has this happened to you? I don't, I don't, uh, it, it used to. I had stopped donating money, giving money to uh, adults. Like, I give money to children all day, you know, like little kids. But I don't give money to adults because they act like how the other dude was acting when they got it was time to pay back, you know, uh, yo, 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 forty or fifty dollars to come funky when it's time to give it back to you, but it wasn't funky when they was asking for it, you know. So that's right. <laughs> I don't, I don't donate. I don't donate. I don't give money to adults no more. I give money to children. That's, that's about it. That's it. Okay. And I think it just dawned on me why people like to say the money stink when they owe it. When they like to be like, oh, take your little funky wow. $50. Because it's not the money that stink. It's their attitude about paying you back that stink. So that stink-ass attitude that they have, they projecting it onto that money. So now you're the one that's actually stinking funky. But you want to say it's the money that's stinking funky. Well, what's, what's the moral of the story? See, my moral of my story is I don't lend money to nobody. That's that's the moral of my story. If, if I got to give you money... I, I I take it as a, a donation. And if I get it back, thank God. But I'm, I'm not expecting it back, really, honestly. Same here. That's the, that's the moral of the story. I I, I lend with, with, with no expectation. You know what I mean? I'm not looking to, you know, receive this money back. So that's 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 the only thing I can tell you. Don't don't have any expectation when somebody, you know, asks you to borrow something. If you decide to give it, give it from your heart because there ain't no telling if they're going to pay you back or not. One more thing. You know what else is bad? What's that? When you loan somebody some money, and you not expecting it in return, but then you don't hear from the person no more. Mm. Like I got a partner right now who asked me to borrow some money, shoot, probably like a year ago. And it's my guy, somebody that I, I just enjoy talking to. I gave him the money. I ain't heard back from him since because I think he feels like he owes me. I ain't ask you to pay me back. You don't owe me nothing, bro. Yeah, it's kind of hit me up. It's kind of hit me up. Send me a text. Call me. Say what's up. Yeah, it's kind of awkward, I guess, because if I owe you money, I don't want to talk to you till I got your money, especially if you see me out and about doing something. I, I'm not expecting nothing in return, man. I just I just enjoy talking to my partner, man. Now I don't even hear from him. Damn it, man. All right. Well, when we come back, we got rumors, and I just want to say I'm sorry. I know. I know. I know. What? But Kanye has a new record. We're going to play a clip of it. Why? Because it's Kanye. So? What does that mean anymore? <laughs> you right. <laughs> what does that mean? You right. Rumors. A, when you say it's Kanye, that's all the more reason not to play it. All uh, right. Well, rumors up next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. No, we walk around. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Let's get to the What's rumors. Happening? Let's talk Celine Dion. Rumor has it. Rumor, rumor has it. Call out a name or you gossiping or you chatty patty. I'm gossiping. This is the rumor report. I mean, I guess we on The Breakfast Club. This is where the tea spills, right? Yes. Right. On The Breakfast Club. Now, we all know Celine Dion. Huge, huge, huge international artist, right? Uh, her music oh, is transcendent. No, I'm yeah, just telling people. Know Celine Dion. Her music is, tra- you know, transcendent through the pop, rock, R&B, gospel, classic music. Well, uh, today she's being diagnosed with stiff person syndrome. Recently, have been diagnosed with a very rare neurological disorder called the stiff person syndrome, which affects something like one in a million people. While we're still learning about this rare condition, we now know this is what's been causing all of the spasms that I've been having. Difficulties when I walk and not allowing me to use my vocal cords to sing the way I'm used to. It hurts me to tell you. I never heard of it when I, when I, for actually when I first seen the caption, I thought it was a joke. When it said stiff person syndrome, I was like, what the hell is that? And you then- You still ain't uh, tell me what it is. What is it? It's a, uh, she just told you exactly what it is. No, it, she, ca- it causes not, spasms. Not really. Only one in, in, I think like a million people get this and it causes spasm. It, it, it affects her when she walks. It affects her when she talks. It doesn't allow her to sing. See, when I hear stiff person, I mean like stiff person, like the person, you know, can't move. That's like what I was just, thinking, yeah. Yeah, and then, you know, sometimes people will be stiff and they'll be like, man, you're too stiff. Loosen up, you know what I mean? I, I, I don't, I'm trying to hear more on this situation. It affects one in one million people. Is that an actual stat? Is that uh, what she, she said? Just, she said like one in one million people, and it causes said? her muscles to tense uncontrollably. Lord have mercy. Well, God bless her, man. Sending her healing energy. Is it curable? I don't know. This is hey, the first time I've ever yeah, heard yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah. This is the first time I've ever heard about it. When I, like I said, I seen the caption and I thought it was a joke. Like you hear a stiff person syndrome. I'm like, what? And then when she explains it and she talks about it, you can see the, you know, it's a 
like a 60, 60 second clip. She's talking about it on Ball Alert. Shout out to our, our fam at Ball Alert, but you can definitely Sucha check Robin. it out there. Mm -hmm. Well, for folks out there who have ever wanted Sian De Celine Dion's life, uh, just know you can't have Celine Dion's rewards without having her problems as well. All so right. always yeah. remember that when you're looking at, you know, somebody else's situation, you say the things like, oh, I want their life. No, you just want their rewards. The reality is, you know, you can't have her rewards without having her, her, her issues, her health issues. So uh, definitely sending her healing energy. I hope it's curable or something. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Cardi B, she was on Instagram Live talking about uh, some of the surgeries that she had. Putting that baby weight on my body plus them shots. So what I did was on this round, let me tell you something. In August, I did surgery and I removed 95%, 95 percent of my biopolymeters. If you know what biopolymeters is, is shots and it was a really crazy process and um all i'm gonna say is right that if you are young if you're 19 if you're 20 if you're 21 and sometimes you're too skinny so you resort to shots bitch don't i got my nose done bitch because i had a big ass nose bitch my i had my daddy nose that to go somebody from the industry helped me with it oh man Cardi's always been real about her surgery. Before she blew up, remember when she first mm -hmm. came on Breakfast Club and she said, you know, she she feel like she could drop dead at any minute because she don't know what kind of ass shot she had in her. We should have played that, that clip, by the way. Yeah, I remember that when she said that. Yeah, but at least she's being honest. And, and a lot of women say that. But it, it's crazy because usually you hear when women get ass shots, a lot of times they can't take it out. So, you know, I wonder if what, what's the different shots because you hear it all the time. Once it's in your, your system or your body, you can't get it removed. So... I'm not sure the difference. And what scared me is when she said, you know, she's like, I got a big nose. I got my daddy's nose. I just thought about it because my, my one-year-old got my nose. And I'm and I'm like, damn, I hope she don't feel that way when she gets a little older. She got daddy oh, nose. I thought it scared you because, you know, you, you got cheek implants a long time ago. And you don't you know necessarily know if you got a great cheek implant job. Like, you don't know what's actually, you know, in your face. Is that Did you get, like, filler or is it just, what, what was it? Now, Cardi B also talks about uh, a oh, you're, vice. You're ready to talk about I'm not I'm talking sorry. to you, man. A vice or getting, a, or getting a BBL. When somebody asks me for help, I wouldn't mind helping them. However, like, I just don't know every single surgeon in the world, so I recommend them to surgeon maid, which that's my friend. But whole point is that it's like, when it comes to BBLs, if y'all want advice from me, I'll tell y'all this, right? Before you get your BBL done, juice for two months. And I'm not talking about, like, juice, like, just do that. Like, you literally have to make sure your blood levels are right. If a doctor say your blood levels is too low or you have diabetes or whatever the f***, don't do it, bitch. You're going to have to live with your <laughs> flat or your fat ass. It don't matter, bitch. Like, I mean, I love the fact she's being brutally honest. Can you really give someone who wants a BBL dietary advice, though? <laughs> because if they were if they were that disciplined to juice for two months, then they would go work out or something for two months. You know what I mean? They'd eat right and work out for two months if you can be disciplined enough to juice for two months. Now, BBL stands for Brazilian butt lift, correct? I have no idea. Taylor? It, it always sounds like a sandwich to me. Right. Whenever I hear BBL, I think BLT, yeah, I don't know. So what do they do with your butt? And why do they call it Brazilian? Like, they lift your butt up or do they poke it out? I didn't say you did. I'm just asking. Okay. <laughs> Let me look it up. Let me Google what a BBL I'm just asking. I'm not saying that you did. I'm just asking. She's, she's so defensive. I, 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 I just don't know. It's, I'm a man. I don't know anything about Brazilian BBL butt lift. definitely mean. The BBL means be back later, man. Oh, be back later. I mean, no, it doesn't. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't, man. It means BBL Brazilian means butt be lift. be back later, man. No, it doesn't. That's why right. when you no, go out doesn't. of the country and you go to, like, uh, Dominican, Republican stuff to get this stuff done, they call it a BBL because they know that you're going to still eat and get fat and you'll be back later. You'll, you'll be, be back, back later, later for yeah. another one. You're right. You'll be back that's, later. You'll be back a little what, bit. That's what it is. You'll be that's back what BBL is. Okay. All I right. ain't know nothing about no Brazilian butt lift. You mean be back later, man. All right. You're right. Now, lastly, uh, Kanye West, uh, he released a new song. And in this song, he talks about some of the Kanye things. Kanye need a BBL. <laughs> he needs a Brazilian butt lift, be back later. Oh, no, whatever. Well, he talks about some of the things that he's been talking about everywhere. I don't care about anything Kanye West is saying. I don't care if he put it over a beat uh, or anything. I keep saying it over and over. There's not a black man on this planet who seeks white validation the way that Kanye West does. That man has embraced Nazi ideology. He don't care about you, black people. Okay, he, he does not care. So I don't care what words he put over a beat. I'm not listening. I agree, but you know there's a lot of people out there right now that be like, damn, that beat was hitting, though. 
I, it was a, I, I didn't even listen to it, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. I just heard the sample. All right, well, that is your rumor report. Now, Charlamagne, who are you giving your donkey to? Man, four after the hour, speaking to stupid people, because that's what Donkey Today is all about. It's all about giving people the credit they deserve for being stupid. Not saying that the person is actually stupid, but what they did was stupid. There is a young woman, man, who is actually a law student and a mom of five. Her name is Anaya Peterson. She needs to come to the front of the congregation. Uh, You can learn a lot from a dummy. All right, buckle your seatbelt. All right. I think that's what it was. If you can learn a lot from a dummy, don't drink and drive. I don't remember. I just know you can learn a lot from a dummy. We'll talk about it for after the hour. You can learn a lot from a dummy. Don't wear your seatbelt. No. That's what it was? was or it was it drink and drive? You I can learn remember. a lot from a dummy. I just remember you can learn no, a lot from a dummy. No, it's wear your seatbelt. You can learn a lot from a dummy. Yeah, that's what it was. That's what it was? Yep. I okay. think so. All right. Well, it's The Breakfast Club. Good morning, Donkey. Today's up next. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. When it's time to get with someone special, the best way to do it is with Magnum Large Size Condoms. That gold foil wrapper is a badge of honor and it means you're protected. And you take care of things with comfort. Except no substitutes. Bring the pleasure with the gold standard. Magnum Large Size Condoms. I was born a donkey. It's the donkey of the day. That's pretty fun. Charlemagne the devil? Possibly. <laughs> the Breakfast Club. Yes, well, donkey of the day for Thursday, December 8th goes to Anaya Peterson. She is a law student and mom of five who decided to tattoo her eyeballs blue and purple. I know, hmm? I know, I know. I came in hot, okay? It's the world we live in, 2022 going into 2023. I don't know how we got here, but I'm telling you, social media is to blame. I just know it. See, this lady was inspired by Amber Luke. Let the record show. I have no idea who Amber Luke is. Had no idea who she was before this story. But apparently, she's an Australian model who got her eyeballs inked blue in 2019. And then she went temporarily blind for three weeks. Okay? Now, this is what I don't understand about the species that we call nigga sapiens, okay? I'm trying not to say that word, so I'm saying the ty- the scientific term, okay? The scientific term is nigga sapiens. How come nigga sapiens don't learn from the mistakes of others, okay? I understand this woman, Amber Luke, is an influencer, but influence works both ways. You can be influenced to do smart things, and you can be influenced to do dumb things. In this case, Anaya was influenced to do something dumb. But the reality is she shouldn't have been because Amber did that. So you don't have to go through that, Anaya. Okay? You saw that Amber temporarily went blind for three weeks. But yet, you still thought going to get your eyeballs tatted blue and purple would be a good thing. Now, let the record show. Anaya is 32. And she also has a tongue split and face tats. So she's into this kind of stuff, clearly. But what bothers me the most about this story is Anaya seems to be a glutton for punishment. See, Anaya got her right eyeball tatted blue in July of 2020, and despite dealing with headaches and dry eyes as part of the healing process, she decided to get her left eye dyed purple in December of the same year. She went months without complications, but she woke up in August with swollen eyelids. Please do yourself a favor and go Google these pictures okay you have to see the pictures she looks like she had an allergic reaction to everything i mean everything pollen insect bites shellfish i mean she looks a lot like a float at the macy's day parade on thanksgiving now the swelling continued to get worse and worse and just when she started to look like martin lawrence after he fought tommy hearns she checked herself into the hospital a and e ward because the prescribed antibiotics she was on did nothing to reduce the severe inflammation. Now, what makes this situation even worse is that one of her kids, a seven-year-old named India, told her not to do it because she would go blind. My, come, come on. Anaya. Anaya, listen to me. God was speaking through your seven-year-old, okay? Seven being the divine number of God. God was speaking through your seven-year-old, and you didn't listen. This is why a not-so-wise man who's now a Nazi once said, listen to the kids, bro, okay? I promise you I listen to my children. We should listen to our children because children are still pure, all right? They just got here, so they still closer to God, okay? Life hasn't jaded them like it's jaded our old asses, all right? They're still connected to that spirit. So if your kids tell you something, you should listen. But Anaya, as I read more on this story, I realize you don't listen to nobody. 
All right, you don't even listen to the inner voice in your head, which is also God talking a lot of the times. God just not loud. Okay, she whispers and she don't repeat herself. So I'm sure God told your silly ass not to get your eyeballs tattooed, but you didn't listen. And God only said it once in a whisper and didn't repeat herself. Then she spoke to your child. You didn't listen. And then that other voice got louder and louder in your head. And you thought that's the voice you should listen to because that voice is loud and repeats itself like the good brother, Dr. Umar. Donations, donations, donations. Tattoo, tattoo, tattoo. Your eyeball, that is. Do you know Anaya told the Daily Mail that she was just going to get one eye tatted at first? Because in her words... I thought that if I go blind, at least I've got the other eye. I should have stuck with that. Nigga sapien, no. Okay? I'm not trying to give up nothing God gave me. You willing to sacrifice an eye for cosmetic reasons? You know how many blind people out here it is who wish they had one good eye to see? You know how many people out here who have one good eye who wish they had both eyes so they could have a pair of eyes? But you was willing to risk going blind in one eye just to get your eyeballs tatted? Oh, well, ask for it and you shall receive. Anaya, why would I ever want you to be my lawyer when these are the kind of decisions you are making? Why? Not to mention, she says, if I could go back in time, I would have done one black tat on my eyeball and left it. No, Anaya, no. Mm -hmm. if, you could, if you could do it all over again, you shouldn't want to do it at all. Okay, Anaya says she tells her daughter not to care about the opinions of, of other people. She says she tells her daughter not to care about the opinions of someone else because they're just ordinary people like you. But no, Anaya, no. You should care about other people's opinions, especially if people are saying, in my opinion, you should not get your eyeballs tattooed because you could go blind. Please give Anaya Peterson the sweet sounds of the Hamiltons. Oh, now you are the donkey. Of the day, Ooh, you are the doggy of the day. Yee-haw. I hope it's only temporary. Mm -hmm. I don't know what makes people wake up and say, I want to tattoo my eyeball. Well, in this case, it was this influencer, Amber Luke. So, you know, once again, I'm telling you, social media is to blame, man. Social media is, is ruining our cognitive abilities. We don't even realize it. I just think it's just stupid people. Well, that's what Donkey of the Day is for, to give stupid people the credit they deserve for being stupid. All right. Well, up next, as CNE. If you need relationship advice or any type of advice, you can call us right now. All right. Now, whether it's a, a problem in the relationship, maybe a man is doing something that you don't like, maybe a girl is doing something that you don't like, maybe you just need some help figuring it out and you don't want to call a friend or a family member, we're your friends. So call us. 800 585 1051. Ask C and E. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. What's going on? If you can call me. It's time to ask C and E. Ooh, let's get it. Ask Charlemagne and DJ Envy anything. Call up now. 800 585 1051. The Breakfast Club. It's that time again. Ask Charlemagne and DJ Envy anything. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, bro. It's time to ask C and E. Morning, everybody. We are The Breakfast Club. I'm DJ Envy. And I go by the name of Charlemagne the God. What's happening? All right. So we have Ask C and E, 800-585-1051. Hello. Who's this? Hello. This is uh, Messiah the One. Hey, Messiah the One. What's your question for C and E? Hey, um, I'm an inspired writer. Uh, I want the, uh, advice on how to move my book forward, like getting involved with publishing companies and things of that nature. Have you written a book yet, sir? Excuse me? Have you written a book? Yes, I have. Have you self-published? Yeah, yeah, I self-published it. Um, yeah, I sent it to you one day, uh, Charlemagne, up to the radio station. I don't know What's how. the name of it? It's, it's called um, Real S.H.I., The Presence of the Baby Boy. Oh, man, I got to look for that one. I got to yeah, look for that I one. Sent it like, uh, I sent it, like, maybe a month ago. I told Envy, too. I gave Envy the copy for all of y'all, uh, but well, he said, you know, he's he busy. He works, too, you know. Well I, well, I can't tell you the process of how to get it done, but, I, you know, I have a book publishing company called Black Privilege Publishing through Simon & Schuster. We put out uh, Tamika Mallory's State of Emergency, How to Win in the Country We Built, and we put out Anita Kopak Shallow Waters, and we have some amazing releases on the way. So the only thing I can tell you is that I will definitely uh, look for your book and, and, and check it out. And, you know, you can leave your information, but I can't give you no 
information on how to get a book deal. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, what I would tell you is keep doing what you're doing. I mean, I think you try to give me the book at the car show, but I would keep popping, uh, yeah. up, popping up at these places where people are and trying to sell that book, and it's like anything else. It's like back in the day, you got to go hand-to-hand. You got to be out yeah. there that's selling and pitching, you know? Yeah, Cause, that's, cause what, I'm a, that's what I've been doing. Yeah. I'm, I'm always looking for fresh authors. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I, I have a lot of we have a lot of releases coming on Black Privilege Publishing from a, you know, a, a lot of people that folks know, but I'm always looking for fresh publishers that got great stories. So I'm going to look for that book, my brother. Yeah. All right. Hello. Who's this? BD. Hey, BD. Good morning. Good morning. What's your question for CNE? I was just wondering, how long does it take when you're in a relationship to want to get engaged, especially if that's something a woman wants? You need to stop asking personal questions. That's what you need to stop doing. Okay. Stop asking the personal I'm, no, question. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, that triggered me a little bit. Goodness I, gracious! I, I, no, no, it tri- no. I, I tell you why it triggered me a little bit because I've been I've been with my my wife for 24 years. Uh, so we've been together since the 1900s and 90s. But we I didn't uh, and propose to her until 2013. Oh wow! I, 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 don't, I, don't 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 you oh wow nothing. I, I mean, I'm, I'm just, that's a lot. That's, that's a, a lot long time. time, and they, that's a very long time. Let me ask you a question: How, how long have you been? Uh, how long have you been, have you been with your man or woman? Nine years. Nine years. Is it serious? Y'all live in the same house, or man? What kind of stupid yes. question is that? They've been together nine years, and you gonna ask if she's serious? No, because it might not well, be yes, serious. In the same house, in the same bed. <laughs> no, you gotta yes. make sure it's serious because it could be, you know, because you could be with somebody for nine years, but it's not serious. Maybe it's long distance. Man, but please. the fact that they living with each other and that y'all in the same bed, y'all y'all paying half a rent. I mean, I think it's about time. I, I think it's about time now. now I mean, if I was in your situation and I wanted to be, you know, engaged and get married and he's basically just, you know, just there because he's comfortable, I would withhold the poo poo. Man, shut up, man. I don't like I don't like what you're saying here. Man, you say close them legs. I would close them legs. I mean, you want to get married. God and and right now he's just, you know, he's just doing what he got to do and he's comfortable. He's knocking it off. He's, now, he's getting no, everything no, as a married no, couple, but he's no. just not married. Think about it like a- this. Age he's sleeping is very in your important. Bed. Shut up, you big cheek fool. How old are you, ma'am? I'm 28. We've been together since I was 19. See what I'm saying? They've been together since they was young. Give that man a little bit more time. How much more time does he need? They've been together it nine years. It took me 15 years. They sleep 15 I mean, years? I he's pushing a baby, and I'm not having a baby without being married. See? And he wants a baby? That's right. You close them legs, mama. I don't think you should close no, your I, legs. I, you, should, you, you, should, you should tell him you want to be married. Because he may him. not know okay. you want to be married. Have you told him that before? He knows. He knows. How does he know if you haven't told him? Tell me how he knows. I'm very vocal about it. Oh, okay. So, okay. right. You've been very vocal. You told him you want to get married. He wants a child. He wants a baby. I'm sure he he stayed. Y'all stay together. You, you wash his clothes. You cook for him. And sometimes, hey, he's just comfortable. But you close them legs, he going to be uncomfortable. I, I, I will say I don't like what Envy is saying, but I understand what he's saying. You know, at this point, you know, he's, he, he's leasing. But, you know, there should be an option to buy. So you have to tell them, you know, after a while, you can't just continue to lease this. You're either going to purchase or nothing. So would that have worked for you if your wife did it? Ooh. Ooh. Uh, yeah. See? <laughs> See? 100%. Okay, I'm just See? Before, you know, I go put this thing on lock. That's right. You put the, you no, put a no, little no, lock no, on no, it. No. 100%. So it, it can it, only it be opened up with a ring. Yeah. It, okay. And because there's other things, too, right? Like, you know, we had a child. So, you know, when you got your daughter asking, like, why y'all don't have the last name, at some point as a man, you're like, why don't we? Like, what am I waiting on? Like, what's the problem here? You know? So, yeah, yeah. he needs to get it like together. married to, without he, being married. Why do that? That's right. He needs to get it together. Like, yes, marriage is a beautiful thing. I'm glad we're all on the same page. Thank the, you, guys. Good but you should, wait, you, should, you should let him wait at least another year. Just make it a nice even 10. No. <laughs> no, lock that thing down, Mama. Tell him if he wants some of that thing, thing, it can only be open with a ring. I heard you. I'm gonna make sure I spread the news. And and don't fall for the trick where he just says, okay, you know, he proposes, and then you gotta wait another ten years for the actual marriage. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah, I can't do that. That's too long. All right. Good luck, Mama. Thank you, guys. Have a nice day. All right. I hope you forget that you told that young woman that, and that man runs down upon you and said, you told her to close her legs? <laughs> and so people around y'all don't even know what the hell's going on. They just hear somebody screaming that at you. <laughs> Ask C&E, 800 If you got questions for C&E, relationship questions will help you out. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. It's that time again. Ask Charlemagne and DJ Envy anything. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Rude. It's time to ask C&E. 
Morning, everybody. We are The Breakfast Club. I'm DJ Envy. And I go by the name of Charlemagne the God. What's happening? Right. It's time for Ask C&E. If you need relationship questions or any type of questions, you can ask us now. Hello. Who's this? Hey, how's it going, man? This is Trey. Trey, what's up? What's your question for C&E? So, man, it's kind of a personal question in a sense. It's uh, kind of regarding towards my daughter. You know, we recently just got cut from a softball team out here in Conroe. And, uh, you know, honestly, I feel like it's personal. Maybe uh, maybe you guys can tell me I'm right or wrong. Um, you know, it's a new softball team. And so I feel that I've been asking questions about where's the money going and how things have gotten spent. And, you know, I'm just asking certain questions that I feel like the uh, head organization isn't liking. Statistically, my daughter's the third best player on the team. And yet we just recently got cut. And not only that, they did it insensitive right before our so it's like, you know, hey, do we still attend? Like, do, you know, what do I do for my daughter? Damn. How does she feel about it? So, so you, you're telling us your daughter got cut, you're thinking, because you were asking too many questions. Sir? And because of your questions, you got your daughter cut, you believe? Yeah, for sure. Are you sure about that, or is your daughter just not good? Nah, bro. She, uh, man, she's hitting us <laughs> in the fence. She's nine years old, bro. She, she's, she's, you know, five foot three at nine years old. Mm. And you what know? kind of questions so, I mean, were you asking? Where the money goes? Do you think, do you, yeah, do you think that I got my daughter cut? Is it a personal issue? I mean, do you think that, you know, I should have just fell in line and been like a sheep? You know, I feel like that's what it is, that they don't want nobody to go against the grain. And, you know, it's not like I was pressuring them about the questions. I was just like, hey, you know, as a monthly courtesy, you know, we would like to see as parents and a coach, where's the money going? You're paying for fields. You're paying for equipment. Like, just what's going on? Not just. Not that I'm saying they pocketing the money, but I'm just saying I'm not trying to fund my team and their team, and I think that's what's going on. So well, I have, I'm but, trying to figure out how can they cut your daughter if they, you've been paying for it. They're the they're the head organization, like they're 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 in charge of the team. So he was asking well, the so question, like, Charlemagne. They're saying let's say is a monthly yeah, stipend. Yeah, let's say it. so he was asking the questions before his daughter made the team, and he was asking. No, we had a, already been on the team. Oh, so this is the new year. So, been, so and I'm a. Mm. And I'm on, the, and I'm a coach. I'm a coach and staff. We're on the team. We've been on the team since the very beginning. Let, let me and, tell you something, my you know, brother. My daughter is a competitive cheerleader, and you know, like you said, we pay for these things. So I reserve right. the right to talk to the coaches about any and everything I want to. Absolutely. Okay. I don't give a damn. I will, I will, I will, I will talk to them. I will tell them things I don't like. Uh, if my daughter has complaints, me and my wife will go talk to the coaches. We got a meeting scheduled with the coach soon. One of the coaches soon, by the way. So uh, there's, I don't see nothing wrong with what you did, sir. No, I don't see nothing wrong with, you, with what you did either. Um, you have the right, like Charlamagne said, you pay, so you have the right to ask questions. Now, the fact that they cut your daughter. Uh, yeah, it does seem like it's is is they really don't want you there because you're asking questions, meaning possibly they're doing something wrong with the money and they don't want it out there. But the great thing about softball and baseball in these sports, there's other teams. So I would look to put Absolutely. my daughter on another team and then bust that team's ass. I've had that happen with me before. <laughs> my, my, I'm serious. My son, when uh, Logan was growing up, uh, my town team at the time, Kinelon, I didn't like the way they were treating Logan. So I put him on another team in Newark, Brick City. Shot the Brick City Lions, and Brick City Lions, he did his damn thing. And I was waiting Already. for us to play Kenelon again and bust his ass. And uh, ever since Logan tough. left Kenelon, uh, that that school, Best that football team has been horrible. So, you know, Ephraim, sometimes you got to leave, go to another school, and do what you got to do. And yeah, um, no, and, and I, I agree. I, I respect that answer. You know, and and honestly, you know, I had a meeting with the coach, and on top of that, the head coach is a 19 year old little girl, and I say little girl because she's 19. You know what I mean? And she's never coached a team before. And uh, I'm like, man, you got grown you got grown folks on this team, man. And Take it to really another team, on? bro. Yeah, and no, I man, God is good, man. And ever since everything, man, I've been hoping and I've been praying, man. And, and some things that kind of come through last night, man, I got a really good phone call. I just didn't know. Maybe I read into too much. You know what I'm saying? I'm the kind of guy that you know, wears his nah. heart on his sleeve. So it's like, is it just me or what's really going on? Take it to and another listen, team. F them. And and, and uh, God is great. Chick-fil-A is good. God is great. And, and if, personally, uh, I would have been asking the coach why my daughter got cut. You got to explain to me why my daughter got cut. And that's right, too. You asked that question as well. Hello, who's this? Don't, don't call us. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be talking that to the coach. coach. Hey, it's Kay from LaGrange, Georgia. Hey, Kay. Am good morning. I, on air? I am on air. Oh, my God. Okay. That's why you called. You called to be on air, man. What's your question for right, CD, Mama? Here, right, Okay, so hey y'all, I just want to say hey, um, Charlemagne, hey, DJ Envy, I love y'all, I love y'all every morning, right? 
Thank so you. I miss ye, but I wanted to know, like, are y'all going to have, like, a different host um, to replace ye? I don't feel like she can be replaced, but I feel like maybe every week y'all can have, like, a celebrity host that hosts with y'all that week. Or is it just going to oh. be you and Charlotte, like, from now on? Ma'am. Ma'am, you said you listen to us every morning. If you listen to us every morning, then you would have, would have heard us say exactly that, ma'am. You're right. Angelique, well, you know, I go to work, and when I go to work, I can't listen to y'all because when oh, I'm on okay. the floor, you know, I download it. I heard radio, but sometimes we don't get service on but, the floor. Well, you're right. Angela Yee is irreplaceable. So, yes, uh, starting in January, we will have rotating guest hosts. Uh, you know, some people will be celebrities. your favorite celebrities. Some will be your favorite podcasters. Some will be your favorite influencers, comedians, all types of stuff. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. And do y'all miss Yee? I want to know that, too. No. Um, yes, y'all do. Don't even act like y'all don't miss. Y'all have y'all man. Y'all know y'all miss. Me. Man, it's only been three days. It's only been three it's days. Been three days. Y'all probably miss her after the first day. But thank y'all so much just for being on air. I love, love, love the Breakfast Club. Y'all have a great day. We love you back, Mama. I, I am okay. extremely happy for Angela Yee, and right. and 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 the, and, and the reason uh, I say. I, I don't miss it because she's not gone. Angela Yee <laughs> is going to be on after the Breakfast Club every day, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're in the same, we're going to be in the same building. Yes. All, everything. Like, she's not gone, y'all. It's just that she has her own spinoff show. That's right. All yeah. right. When we come back, that's Ask C&E, by the way, 800 585 And when we come back, uh, we got to talk Brittany Griner. She's been released, and we'll give you the details. So don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. All right. Morning, everybody. We are The Breakfast Club. I'm DJ Envy. I go by the name of Charlemagne the God. What's happening? All right, and let's get to the rumors. Rumor has it. Rumor, rumor has it. Call out a name or you gossiping or you chatty patty. Right, I'm gossiping. This is The Rumor Report. I mean, I guess we on The Breakfast Club. This is where the tea spills, right? Yes. Right. On The Breakfast Club. This, this first one ain't no damn rumor, okay? This is fact. This is fact, and we got to discuss Brittany Griner. Hey. This is a CBS News special report. I'm Gail King with Tony DeCopel and Nate Burleson. We are here in New York, and the White House has just confirmed that the United States and Russia have agreed, have agreed to a prisoner swap to free basketball star Brittany Griner. Very big news indeed. The two-time Olympic gold medalist for Team USA was released just minutes ago in exchange for convicted Russian arms dealer Victor Boot. Known as the man who makes war possible, he was serving a 25-year sentence in the U.S. for conspiring to kill Americans and conspiring to sell weapons to a terrorist organization. And if you don't remember what happened, Griner was detained in Russia in February after airport security found vape canisters containing cannabis oil in her luggage. In August, she was sentenced to nine years in prison for drug possession and smuggling. Look at God. Mm -hmm. Dr drop on the clues bombs for Brittany Griner. Sorry. I didn't think they would get a deal done this fast. It didn't if sound at like all. it. Mm -mm. Yeah, if at all, especially with everything going on in Russia and Ukraine. But um, I am extremely happy for her. Absolutely. And I'm glad she'll be reunited with her loved ones for the holidays. And I'm extremely happy for everyone who has been pushing to get her home. Because if folks hadn't have kept, you know, Brittany in the conversation, she probably would have gotten lost in that Russian system. That's right. And now it's, it's crazy because it, it got kind of silent and... People were concerned and worried. They said they put her to a, a, another side of the camp when she was uh, a lot of uh, physical working. And, and, and we didn't hear much, but she has been well, released today. Well, I'm not going to say I didn't hear much because a lot of people I follow literally, when I say literally tweet about her every day, like mm -hmm. Don Staley, you know, coach of the University of South Carolina, tweets about her. Every, or not tweets about her, post about her on Instagram every day. You know, she might tweet too. I don't be on Twitter, but I see her on Instagram. You know, Angela Rye posts about her every day. Jalen Rose, you know, literally shouts her out every day on his TV show. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like they, they've been counting down the days. So, and Lisa Leslie too. It's a few people, quite a few people I follow that keep her in the conversation. So, right. you know, salute to them because I feel like if folks hadn't been making all that noise, she probably would have gotten lost in the system. Absolutely. But I'm, I'm telling you right now, the Biden administration uh, also better prepare for the backlash. Because, what you mean? Because they traded an international arms dealer, Victor Bout, a man they called a merchant of death for Brittany Griner. But, uh, left U.S. Marine Paul Whelan imprisoned in Russia. He's been locked up in Russia for four years on espionage charges. So I'm sure the right-wing media is about to have a field day yes. with this one. Yeah. I'm sure. I, I, you can guarantee it. But I also want to tell y'all, if, if Brittany Griner goes back to the WNBA, 
y'all should show up to those games and start supporting her in that league. Yes. You should be supporting the league anyway. Absolutely. But when she, when she goes back to the WNBA, y'all should absolutely support her. Go buy some WNBA merchandise. Jerseys. All the tweets and social, that's right. All, all that. the tweets and social media support is great, but real world support is better. Go oh. support that. Go support them, them, them young ladies so, you know. They don't have to end up in situations like this overseas. Absolutely. And also, uh, Pretty V, she talks, there was rumors that her and Rick Ross were dating. And uh, she talks about that in this interview. Rumor right. has it that you're dating a boss. Uh-huh. Some say the yeah. biggest boss that you've seen thus far. Uh-huh. <laughs> Rick uh-huh. Ross, is that really what kind of attracted you to him to say, no, that's the guy for me? Ooh. Yeah, it's the boss. <laughs> it's, I think yes. it's the, the boss in him. I mm-hmm. just think he's like, you know, I like guys who lead. So mm-hmm. when you a leader... You could step to me, you know? Mm-hmm. That's real. But again, when it comes down to Ross, like, Ross is the type of person who you look at and you just admire, you're inspired by. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to do what you're doing, so teach me. Mm-hmm. So in the, in the back end, I'm actually a student to the game mm-hmm. as well. I so, I, I, I mean, yeah, if you want to say that, that's just what it is. Lady Lemon Pepper. <laughs> Lady Lemon Pepper. Oh, Drop one of the bombs for Lady Lemon Pepper. Shout out to Pretty V. I'm let, y'all know Pretty V. Y'all definitely know Pretty V is going to be in uh, the guest rotation for the new year on the Breakfast Club. You that's know right. That, right. Absolutely. Y'all know. That's that's family right there. I love Lady Lemon Pepper. All right. And uh, lastly, Lady Lemon Pepper. shout to Hove. All right. Now, Samantha Samaka announced on Twitter recently that Hove gave her $40,000 scholarship to attend uh, one uh, a school that she would like to, which is the Rock Nation School of Music at Long Island University, LIU. So, uh, Hove hit her up with forty thousand dollars, which is uh, continuing her dream of getting her education. So congratulations! I thought she shouted out Beyonce and Jay though. Was it both of them or just Jay? Uh, she thanked both of them. Hove and Beyonce. Now I'm saying Hove and Beyonce. Yep. So okay. Shout out to them. Okay, that's but, right. And, and and also too, since we uh, saluting Hoves, man. Um, you know, uh, rest in peace to my good brother Hovane. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, don't forget his viewing ceremony is is today. That's right. At uh, St. Paul Community Baptist Church from 9 to 10 a.m. And uh, the service is from 10 to 11.30 a.m. That's right, Brooklyn. Yeah, that's right, in Brooklyn. So rest in peace to my good brother, Hovain. Love you, King. Always. Send the healing energy to Kim and the family. Mm -hmm. All right, well, that is your rumor report. Now, when we come back, it's Nicki Minaj's birthday. So let's get on a Nicki Minaj mix. Let me know your favorite record, and we'll get it on this morning, all right? Don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. There's so many offers going on for the holidays, but one really stood out to me, Verizon. When you switch to Verizon, you get a gift for you and a gift to give. Might want to go check out your Verizon store if you're down to save a bunch of money. The People's Choice Mix is up next. Morning, everybody. We are The Breakfast Club. All right, I'm DJ Envy. I go by the name of Charlemagne the God. What's happening? How y'all feeling out there? All right. Now I want to remind you guys, uh, tomorrow on the show, we have A Boogie with the hoodie. He'll be joining us. His album comes out tomorrow. And also... <laughs> Who else we got? Uh, Dr. Umar Johnson. King Kong Consciousness, Dr. Umar Johnson. Dr. Umar also is going to be on my late night talk show tonight. Uh, hell of a week on Comedy Central. Uh, tonight is... Uh, and uh, Actually, it's Trevor Noah's last episode tonight. And uh, we come on right after Trevor Noah, 11.30 p.m. on on Comedy Central. So salute to Dr. Umar. He'll be on a hell of a week tonight on Comedy Central. And he'll be on Breakfast Club tomorrow. All right. All right. When we come back, we got the positive notice to Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. We are The Breakfast Club. I'm DJ Envy. I go by the name of Charlemagne the God. What's happening? Now, Charlemagne, you got a positive note for the people. Yes, I do have a positive note for the people, man. The positive note is simply this. Uh, Rumors can make you dislike innocent people. All right. Don't judge people from what others are saying about them. Be wise. Get to know them for yourself. Then form your own opinion. The one talking to you may be the one you need to stay away from. Breakfast club, bitches. Y'all finished or y'all done? 